you only find out about how complicated your supply chain is when you put it under some sort of stress. And which is great because uh, that sort of followed up in that there are what COVID also showed was there were critical pathways that we didn't expect. Certainly in automotive, suddenly you couldn't ship a hundred thousand dollar Mercedes because you were missing a two dollar microcontroller. Yeah. I mean, is there <laughs> how quickly everybody forgets? Have yeah. we forgotten this? Is are there uh, more analyses done on where the critical components are on a board um, for, for where those are, are, are coming from, for where there might well be shortages that you don't expect. And that could be MLCCs, the multi-layer capacitors, that could be small, um, small microcontrollers. We've seen the same things. Please don't say MLCCs. I remember, you know, 2018, <laughs> You remember every MLCC salesman was was a was a king in in in, in 2018, and I, I have that 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 lurking suspicion that the MLCC times will come around again. Um, yeah, I remember buying um, and yeah, back to the sort of nonlinear behavior. I remember buying MLCCs from China, uh, which were main brand MLCCs that were on reels um, uh, that uh, from secondary distribution that had the customer name crossed out in Sharpie, and what they were was they were. Um, allocation st allocation stuffing parts right so you have people you give it an allocation if you don't take your allocation you're not going to allocation next quarter so you always take your allocation and then you sell the parts out the back door right and so these were completely legitimate main vendor mlccs available to anyone who's prepared to do the legwork in china in good numbers um but they were but you know they they were they'd come to you by a funny route so you don't please don't please don't have the mlcc times come again i, I think more about I, I try to think more about the multi-source aspects in the platform, but in the end, there is some, I think you had one of your questions was, where does the power, where's the power lie? And I think the power lies in the same place that it lies in any supply chain or any network of any business network, which is it lies in the most constrained point. Um, and uh, that will depend, that will differ for different companies and it'll differ for different, different, supply chain participants but fundamentally the person the your the supplier who is the least substitutable um for whom multi-sourcing you know uh, has carried the highest cost is the person who has the power so you know you think about microcontrollers you think about how how bad things had to be. We saw a lot of RP2040s in 2022, right? You think how bad things had to be that people were prepared to take their STM32 or, or microchip or NXP software stacks and tear them apart and figure out how to rebuild them on to run on RP2040. RP2040 is a lovely product, right? But it fundamentally isn't an STM32, and there's a huge gap between I can run my software on STM32 and I can run it on the 2040, right? And so you sort of feel the incumbency advantage of um, people who build complicated semiconductor devices. They need to be very fancy. They just have to have a lot of, um, pick some metric of complexity or function points or something. They just have to be, you know, someone who's making a linear regulator doesn't have a lot of power. Someone who's making even a fairly simple microcontroller does have a lot of power um, because it's very, very hard to summon up the energy to substitute them when times are hard.